so in a lot of my Studio 120 videos, I talk about painting how things feel. Not just how they look, but how they feel. And today I've been working on, for the 50th time in a row, Margin Pepe. And I was getting frustrated because her blouse, I wasn't getting the folds right in her blouse. And I was mainly just like, okay, this line isn't right, and looking at the photograph and the reference material and working from that. Instead of putting the reference material away and just letting it flow, and it might be because of the size of it. It's a very large canvas that's unstretched, just because I, I couldn't afford to get it stretched, and I'm too lazy to do it myself. So I pulled out um, Melanie, um, my portrait of Melanie Moore, who's a model in Providence, and I started working on her skirt so that I could reset my head and hopefully find that flow to be able to go back into Marge and Pepe and just punch out the, the blouse and not be as daunted or bored with the size of, of it. Because um, I think that's it. It's just, I'm bored. Uh, whereas with Melanie, I have all these really great um, abstract shapes that are going to make up the skirt. And it's easier for me now to go back in and cut in with dark blues and dark browns and dark and blacks, I guess, and you just dark dark colors and uh, cut in folds, but also go over them with lighter blues and uh, almost white to um, <laughs> where'd I go to 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 create the effect of crinkly cotton. I forgot where I went. Anyway, uh, the thing was with Margin Pepe, I wasn't painting how it felt. With Melanie, maybe it's the size, or I found a rhythm that I can e easily lock into and just continue with the skirt. I want it to, when I get done, I don't want it to look like a cotton skirt. I want it to feel like a cotton skirt so that the viewer can say, I know what that feels like. And I've been thinking, just like I do with all my paintings, I understand how that feels. That expresses how my my energy feels to me, is what people say to me. That expresses how sadness feels to me. That is exactly how blah, blah, blah feels. And for me, it's no different that um, the energy feels correct in and around the character, but also that what that character is supposed to be wearing feels correct. You know, like a singer sergeant, not that I'm a singer sergeant, but a singer sergeant dress, a velvet dress, has to feel correct. It can't just be a big blob of red and black. It's got to feel like velvet. So I'm trying to lock my head into that space and feel the coolness of, of pressed cotton in the summertime and how it feels when it starts to wrinkle. How, how Just how cool and crisp it can be especially when it's ironed and it's starch in it. I just love that feel. But anyway, uh, I was thinking about where this started, this thing about not just doing a portrait of or a painting of something and making it look right. And I, I, I realized actually just a little while ago, just a few minutes ago, as a matter of fact, how much of an obsession this became when I was a kid, I grew up on Cape Cod. I'm from Dennisport, Massachusetts, right in the middle of the Cape. And my family had been there for hundreds and hundreds of years. And actually, uh, we, <laughs> we were politicians, and, and we had a sea captain from, from Dennis. We had one of my relatives built downtown Dennisport after a big fire. So, you know, we're real Cape Codders. Touch me. I'm a native. But... Um, so most of my reference as a kid were the people around me, uh, the very few artists I knew of on Cape Cod. I was born in 63, so I grew up during the 70s, and there was no great web. You know, there was no, and I don't just mean internet, but there, there was, people weren't as connected as they are now. You knew your neighbors, but you didn't know the guy that lived 20 miles away. That may have been, uh, might as well have been another country on the Cape, as far as we were concerned. But 
one artist I did know of, one of a few artists that I did know of on the Cape was a woman named Nancy Cole, and she's a Chatham artist. Uh, she was one of my favorite artists when I was a kid, and she's still alive. She, she's not painting as much now, I understand, which is unfortunate, because for me, looking at her paintings, she taught me how to paint how things feel, how the sun feels. How the how a, a, a figure's dress feels, and I know a number of artists on the Cape discount her because she uses so much green. She loves the garden. She loves the outdoors. Uh, she she does a lot of paintings of the way Cape Cod used to be and people at the beach used to be before there were so many people packed in on the Cape and before selfishness actually was the rule of the day. People were very polite, and it was quieter, and that's what she was able to to express in her paintings, was just quiet. But she captured these people in moments in and around the cave. Um, just, you know, real basic, sorry, it's very warm in here, but nothing, not big, splashy, look at us, we're on a gigantic yacht moments but just like quiet moments. And she did these paintings of children at the beach that I just loved. And I know people trivialized her. And I, I really, I get upset with that because this woman not just taught, taught me how to paint, she taught so many other people to paint that the people that tried to copy her are, are, are doing extremely well in Chatham and around. And they do the, you know, the big money work. Big money work on Cape Cod of their children at the seashore. But what Nancy did, that these other people who are totally incapable of doing, was she captured the character, she captured the person. There are many people that paint children by the sea, but they take the children, the you know, the reference material of the child by the sea, and they turn the child's head so you can't see the face because they're incapable of capturing the look of the hum of the person. They'll hide the child's hands because they can't paint their fingers. They're amateurs, and this woman, this woman is a really great figure painter. It's just it kills me that you know she's not in all the big Cape Cod magazines. It absolutely kills me because she really, she was the one. She's the one person who could do it right. Um, and again, it's Nancy Cole in Chatham. I just, I really love her, and I love her paintings of children. She has their faces. She has their fingers. And they're the child's fingers. They're not just any child's fingers. They're that child's fingers. So it's that standard of feeling the person that I'm using as a reference, or whatever I'm trying to use as a reference, that I try to get in. Not the look of them, how they feel. Each child's fingers are going to move their own way. Each person holds their hand their own way. My hands aren't the same as Audrey Hepburn's hands. Mine are kind of sausagey and veiny. They're like my dad's, but they're not my dad's. They're like my mom's, but they're not my mom's. You know? And so when I'm painting anything, that's what I think about all the time. Was my, is my friend Nancy Cole, who honestly, if I could get anyone to do a portrait of me or my son, it would be Nancy, just because she can, she gets the person how they feel, and it is such, it's such a rarity, a rare talent that people are able to do or bother to learn. So I was just, I was just thinking about it, and I was thinking all about all these awful painters who copy her and end up in the paper and the magazine and they're just so inadequate. But that's, um, so anyway, that's when I'm, uh, <laughs> that's the standard I'm trying to hold myself to today. I, I feel I'm doing it here with Melanie's skirt, but I've got to remember to do it with Marge and Pepe because every painting I do is important. Not that it's going to end up in the Museum of Modern Art, and I'm going to be celebrated. You know, I'm going to be carried around on people's shoulders and turned into this major national treasure. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, 
Each painting is important because the mistakes that I make in this one are going to sit with me and go into other paintings. The things I do right in this one, like Nancy, capturing the fingers of an individual child, is going to carry from painting to painting to painting to painting. So each work I do is important. I, every time I let my standard fall, and I've talked about that before, every time I make excuses, that's going to carry over. So we're not making excuses today, even though it's hot. And I'm sweaty, and I just want to take a nap or go swimming. We're going to hold ourselves to the standard that Nancy Cole did. Does. <laughs> Alright, got to get back to work on making folds in Melanie's skirt. Ciao.